So this is part two of a series on performance. Specifically in this case we're using jsperf.com to test examples of certain performance nuances. And aside from my previous video which was about for loops, this video is going to actually go into just a couple different examples of uh, how arrays behave and where their performance issues occur and some of their performance benefits uh, exist. So I saw this uh, example of, that was being presented where people were trying to, to figure out what was actually faster or better when initializing an array. So we would normally initialize array and set its capacity and then that would be what uh, we would assume because you preset the capacity that you would get better speed out of it. And also you'll see here that uh, the other argument was that this was that this because behind the scenes the array's initializer is ambiguous and that you could pass anything into it like in a string that people were favoring uh, you doing it a different way. Well I wanted to also know how well the performance was on this. And in this particular sample what we're seeing is that it, the fastest one uh, ends up being uh, you know using a shortcut not even using this at all and setting the length to the size that you want. The size is 10,000, it's up here. And then filling the array. Now the key thing is most of the tests I've seen don't consider the fact that you need to actually test filling the array along with your test. Just because you iterated 10 million times on initializing an array means nothing. It's when you actually initialize that array, what is the net effect of that initialization? Did it modify how the array performs? And apparently, looking at this test, it does. Now, what I'm going to do is I'll pause the video and fast forward when I'm done, but I'm going to run this test again so that we're sure, because I've actually seen different results at different times. Okay, so here we are on the second round. Now, this is quite bizarre. Uh, they're a little bit different, but what's really interesting is that counterproductive to the normal idea behind what would make an array faster the initialization of its capacity is actually slower. <laughs> and I don't know why that is. I'm assuming that the reason why that is is because the depth of ambiguity underneath the hood of uh, an array when you actually pass values in is that there's a lot of logic going on behind the scenes. Which that logic and preparation for if the number of parameters being passed into the constructor is, is greater than zero then it's going to do a bunch of work and so this looped test of 10,000 but then looped over and over and over to check how fast it can go well there's you know there's obviously a problem there so it seems like I mean I would just kind of bet that based upon the plus or minus nuances that uh, exist in these tests that they're pretty much the same except for this case. So, I mean, whether you're doing it this way or this way, uh, I mean, oddly enough, I keep seeing this one kind of being up in the, the winner circle, but as we can see here, that the pretty standard new array without any uh, extra fluff still works just fine. This may not actually uh, continue to be true in higher numbers, maybe past, you know, 64K, I've seen things about that as well. But in this case, we're seeing that the actual operation seems to be that it's probably best to go ahead and set your length. Uh, I mean, I would, I would suggest setting your length after you initialize the array. So this is some interesting nuances of arrays. Now um, we're going to go on to another test that I've done, which is uh, for array modification. Now, what, what's the deal with this? Why even do this? I wanted to emphasize what things about array are good and bad. Well, arrays are actually pretty fast in certain operations, but they're also really, really slow in others. So this is just an example of what you're dealing with um, when using arrays. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and then fast forward so you can see the results. Okay, so here we are. And wow, look at this. This is really, really interesting. So the fastest operation in an array apparently is a pop operation. So Doing, this is once again set up to do a maximum of 10,000 iterations. Uh, my setup code essentially creates a, a copy of the full source that's just, again, a, a setup of a loop of numbers that it iterates on. 
basically this full array of 10,000 items gets shortened down to zero and it seems to be extremely fast. So let's review what these actually do. Push adds one to the end of the array. Pop removes it from the end of the array. Unshift adds something to the beginning of the array and shift removes it from the front of the array. And that's basically what they do. So it's very strange to see that pop is the winner, then shift is, is second place, and then push, adding to the end of the array, is next, and then unshift, or adding to the beginning of the array, is extremely slow. It's, it's just magnitude slower, which is really, really interesting to think about. Well, why is this happening? Well, it's because I would say, I would, I would speculate because the way that the array works is that every time you're adding something, like if you add something to the beginning of an array, what you end up doing, it, you, you actually move everything down one. You have to take everything out of its place and move it down and then add that one to the beginning. So this is probably an extremely heavy operation and something to consider if you're using an array is that this adding to the beginning of the array is probably extremely slow. Now, why am I actually getting into this video? Well, I'm actually leading up to something. In the next videos, we're going to actually cover some other interesting tests like string concatenation and simulating a queue. And what happens is when you're doing string concatenation and simulating a queue, these type of operations are important to recognize which is, is faster or slower. Uh, why, would, why a queue? Well, that's also going to get into talking about a string builder and also refers back to some of my, my first video that talks about a linked list because in this case, a linked list, if you're trying to add to the beginning of a linked list, it is no faster or no slower than adding to the end and probably not much faster or slower than actually inserting in the middle because of the nature of the linked list. So that concludes this video. Check out the next one for string concatenation and simulating a queue.